welcome to episode 15 with Austin. Yeah. All right. uh, thanks for having me on. Excited to uh, catch up and, you know, talk about talk about some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> get started. What did you want to talk about? Yeah, I was wondering of like, I was thinking, how did we actually meet? Because it's with you and with other people I've been connecting with. Uh, for like the last couple of years, it seems like we've known each other since forever ago, but it's like, oh, you're here. Oh, yay. We know each other, but I can't remember how we connected. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I honestly, yeah, the same. I, a, a lot, a lot of people that, you know, you, we run into on this kind of like awakened path. It's because maybe we, uh, we run in similar circles or we um, we follow similar similar people or like we post stuff you know that resonates with each other and I think I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I followed you on Instagram because you did some um, live shows or like Instagram lives with uh, Chris a long long time ago yeah okay mm -hmm. i've i've been following chris a long a long time and um uh and yeah i think i just followed you after uh after one of those after one of those live shows oh yeah that's probably when yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and then i think we actually like met met um in a telegram group i think um mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think so too Wow, that makes yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now that's I don't, like, I don't know yeah. how many Telegram groups we've been in together, but uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, if if you if we go, I I have I've deleted a lot of them, but I bet you if we go, if I went through uh, a lot of them, we were probably mutual contacts in a a lot of the Telegram groups too. <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. It's like you you keep getting these people coming into your lives uh, in one way or another, and then at some point you decide to connect. And but we've always been present in each other's fields. And and as you know, I I lived I used to live in the United States before. So, but have you always been in your area? Is it okay to say where you're at? I don't know because maybe you don't want to say, it, but it's you know it's okay. But I, I've been very close to where you're at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in I'm in Washington D.C. Can't really say. Uh, it's not a it's not as big as a state like you know Florida or Texas. So, um, but but yeah, I uh, I've been in Washington D.C. the majority of my time in the U.S. Um, I've moved around a little bit. Uh, I've been um, I've been I've lived in uh, Illinois. I've been. I was in. Hey, wait a second! Wait a second! You say Illinois, and people will, were like telling me, "Oh, it's Illinois." Is that something like in, in the U.S. People just kind of like bash each other for not pronouncing names correctly. Yeah, and, stuff like and, and <laughs> I, think, I think I've just I grew I I grew up in a foreign country, and everyone just call it calls it Illinois. So, <laughs> wait, where can you tell people where you grew up? Because I yeah, really uh, I'm I'm originally from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. and so, people yeah okay you you pronounce the s that's the most logical thing to do right yeah. <laughs> unless it's like french and maybe it's like Ilonois. yeah how do you know french by the way <laughs> um uh like i grew up like i said i grew up in ethiopia and ethiopia is kind of like uh the cultural hub of africa um so there's mm. a lot of, a lot yeah. of diplomats there's uh there's a french a french specific school there's a greek specific school there's um uh an italian school there's um i think yeah there was a russian school um so uh a lot <laughs> oh wow so there there's um i i got to i got to come across like a lot of people from a lot of different cultures um, because, um, in that country, it's like, like I said, it's a cultural hub, uh, the, Af the, like, you know how the headquarters of the UN in the, uh, on the West coast is, or on the West, Western hemisphere is in New York city. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, well, maybe you didn't know that, but you do now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the headquarters, the headquarters of the UN 
uh, in the Western Hemisphere is in New York City. The headquarters of the UN um, Eastern Hemisphere is actually in Ethiopia. Oh, that? Okay, that I did not know. Wow. Yeah. Um, and the, the headquarters of the African Union, which is basically the UN of Africa, um, is also in Ethiopia. So, wow, so cool. I grew I grew up around I grew up around like um, a diverse group of people like I I picked up you know languages here and there and especially since it's because I was young I was in Ethiopia between like you know birth and like eighteen years old. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, never had like full exposure to one culture like so I didn't really get to learn Russian completely or French or Italian but I have a deeper understanding of like the people like the cultural nuances and yeah so that's kind of how I know all these languages and I learned Spanish was the one of the languages I learned uh actually in school like when I was in college I took two years of Spanish wow that's so cool when I came when I came to the U.S., I I took two years of Spanish um, in college, uh, and then um, before that, before that, uh, I lived I lived in uh, uh, Mexico. I don't know if you're familiar with really. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Los Mochis, like the Sinaloa. No, yes. Oh my God, I have. I used to have like a, a a a guy that I had a really big crush on that lived in Sinaloa when I oh, was like fifteen years old. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. How long were you there? When and what dates? Because uh, I'm so, like, what dates? Like, it was less than a year. It was between me starting college. Uh, it was like when I came to the U.S. and, and like between me starting college. So what years, like, what years were th was that? Uh, like, between 2006 and 2007. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, some, something, something around, around there. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I was, in, I was in Los Mochis uh, for, like, eight months. Like, eight, nine months. Wow, that's so crazy. And that was before I learned Spanish. So I picked up. I picked up a lot of Spanish just living there and like having to survive, uh, not really survive. I was honestly, I stayed, I stayed, I stayed with my dad's friend. Um, I stayed with my dad's friend there and he helped my dad in Ethiopia uh, build um, like telecom stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got to Los Mochis, um, that dude like lived on like one of those villas you see like on tv like a oh. cliff a cliffside yeah. villa uh like overlooking like the ocean and everything wow so so, so uh i was like uh <laughs> how the fuck is this guy so rich and i asked my dad um <laughs> and he just never he never he never told me exactly what else what else his friend did um, <laughs> which was probably not very legal right <laughs> yeah so so after i got after i got older um like this is me uh this is me in college uh fast forward a couple of years after i'm learning spanish and stuff um and i learned that sinaloa is like like drug king central like there's yeah. like there's yes. like so so this man possibly might might have been like the accountant of a or like i don't know i don't know what <laughs> He's definitely, he was definitely involved because whenever we would go anywhere, we had like, uh, we had like a car following us and like he had, he had like armed security. So I'm like, I put all these pieces started falling into place like two years later. I was like, oh, cool. I was like probably staying with a drug king. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and then so and after that, what did you do? Oh, wait a second. I also have one more question before you move on to, to the next um, part of your journey, because um, I've heard a lot about like Ethiopia as like, um, for me, what I admire a lot about that culture is the stamina. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? 
in terms of like the strength and there's a lot of runners there that like you know because i'm a, i'm my background is like also i did a lot of running in my college years and stuff and uh for me it's like also the mexicans like we have this running culture of like they we're just natural runners and i love this book i don't know if you know this book it's like born to run yeah born, we're born to run in ethiopia that's 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 also them. I don't know. Do you do running or do you have people in your life that like, but in any case, you have that stamina, no matter if you run or not. But I'm just curious about like what you think about that. That you know, Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's de it's definitely part of the culture. It's really huge. It's something that um, Ethiopia takes a lot of pride in. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it is kind of hard, hardwired into uh, into the genetics too because um I can um ask me yeah. to go to the, ask me to go to the to a gym and lift weights I can maybe do it for 30 minutes but if you say like run on a treadmill or like go run outside I could probably run for like four hours and yeah exactly Damn so enough. there's definitely yeah. yeah there's definitely something in my legs like like the leg muscles of you <laughs> of Ethiopians and even me somebody who never trained their whole lives like you know cultivating it um can can you know has pretty strong legs so uh maybe that's I I, I would definitely give uh give up like maybe 50 percent of it for a more balanced like you know upper body but you know we can't have it all like no but mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I was gonna say at the end of the day, I'm okay. Uh, if I have to run for my life from like a lion, at least I'll, I'll be, I'll be good. No, but it, that be just made me think about your dreams about like, like you know, fighting against zombies and stuff. You like, you have the stamina. You did it for like three days in a row. <laughs> you know, it's like in your uh -huh. dreams. So it's like that's what you're built for. That's what you're here to do on this uh this reality at, at least you know it's like we're so many things i feel like you know there's like so many layers to this reality but at the same time what did you come here to do and what are your genetics and this this 3d plane or whatnot and your ancestors and everything that plays a big role i think in in terms of what uh you're you're built to do yeah what do you think about that <laughs> um yeah definitely i think certain people are hardwired to be able to uh you know handle certain things better that's just that's just the bottom line like you said genetics or like uh culture or whatever like um um but uh but yeah as far as like my purpose and stuff um i i'm kind of figuring it out now but um but yeah it uh like just i mean just even going back through how i grew up like my exposure to like all these cultures as a kid and um just having being able being able to uh uh kind of have so many perspectives in my head um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like like i like i was saying i grew up around like russians and italians and greek people and um indians and um and like all all these cultures like i i had i had friends who went to all uh, all of those schools growing up um like i had friends who uh from like the indian school i had friends from the russian school blah 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 like italian um and um uh yeah looking back i think uh and now even um into what i'm doing professionally for work uh, I was always kind of like supposed to be like a bridge builder. So mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if my, at the moment, I mean, you know, we were, like you said, we're multidimensional. We evolve, like my, my purpose might change in the future, you know, when a, a new, a new thing arises. Um, mm -hmm. but, but right now um, I feel really called to kind of like bridge gaps, um, you know, like, uh, like these polarity gaps between like cultures and like uh you know race and like all these like I call them like I mean uh I don't I didn't invent the word but there's a lot of these things called 
that I like to call consciousness traps in in modern uh, psychology yeah. and like modern society. Um, and it's like things around race, things around class, things around money, um, like just certain aspects of these things clearly, clearly are, are, are like siphoning you and like sucking your attention and consciousness and people keep engaging with them and like they don't realize the, the puppet strings uh, like people like we have like um, another thing I like to say is um, any kind of unintegrated like fears or um, traumas that we experience mm -hmm. the the systems the you know external environment uh, other people uh, they basically like can puppet us with those with those strings like that's how um, that's how militaries get uh, get people to do unthinkable things, like uh, like how um, how soldiers are brainwashed to like not see the people that they're invading as humans, and all this yeah. stuff. Um, so um, yeah, I think a, a big part of my mission now is to kind of shed light on um, these traumas that are. That are puppet puppeting people. I keep doing this because I yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's a good uh, that's a good image to yeah, portray. Them. I'm doing I'm doing the strings and the movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a, that's the dynamic that's happening. But, You're totally right. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not it's not the external system. Like this is another thing that another distinction I like to make too. When we're being puppeted. Um, you know, through our traumas, through our un unintegrated fears, unintegrated aspects. Um, it's not necessarily the external doing this to us. It's like we feel these holes and we, you know, we go along. Like you feel, so you, you feel something making you want to do this and you do that versus like, you know, before doing this, you were like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So there's like, there's this disconnect in people where they can't tell, um, you know, or it's like, um, um, they just, I don't know, maybe they don't have the awareness to see where, uh, it's not really like the, like about blaming the external or your circumstances or what made you, what made you do this. Mm -hmm. It's about, um, uh, how how you kind of allowed this energy to get you to that point yeah and then like that's the biggest that's the biggest shadow work and like i we talked before you started recording about um what shadow work is to me and like yeah it's uh every every time i do shadow work it could be anywhere from 30 minutes to like you know a half a day i don't know but what i'm basically yeah. doing is uh reviewing my week or life or um certain times where i felt like i compromised compromised my integrity or my true true self to you know uh you know yeah the, to, to, to the puppets to the, like the puppet strings yes so. exactly yeah <laughs> yeah uh, it, yeah i i get i get exactly what you mean and you know for people listening like um because some people, I feel like I just got this message. Some people don't have a clear, uh, I guess, uh, interpretation or I guess meaning of like, what what is shadow work? You know, because I've even had people ask me this directly once in a while. Like, so what do you mean by shadow work? How would you define shadow work? Like in, in concretely in your words? Um, to me, like I, like I said, shadow work could be some, like how we do it is I think specific to each person. Like somebody, Somebody can, like, you know how I just lay in bed for six hours and do shadow work? Like, somebody's, uh, somebody might be going to the gym and lifting weights to do their shadow work, which I might, <laughs> I should probably start on if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what? This, okay, so this clear message came in for somebody that's listening. This is really important. 
some people think, oh, I got chills. Some people think that um, they were just really attached to their like physical image. And they think that this is a healthy thing to go to the gym every day. Mm. But in reality, this is an addiction. It's not something that you should be. Yeah, this is not something that should, you should be focusing on because you think that it's good for you because it makes you feel good. But in reality, you're just attached to this image that it, it's not really you. You see what I mean? It's like, um, yeah, there are these, uh, and then, and, and, you know, society makes it look like, oh, well, this is a healthy thing to do. But in reality, it's an addiction that's just attaching you actually to something that is not really you. You see what I mean? I feel yeah. like there's some people going through that right now. So that need to, needed to be said in, yeah. in this episode to somebody listening. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, for, for sure. Yeah. Like, again that's that's where that's like a prime example of when you do shadow work like am i going to the gym for me am i going to the gym you know to make myself healthy or is there uh, an underlying puppet string that's like is it is it is it me is it me uh like trying to avoid being judged by people am i trying to fit in somewhere um if you're not if you're not doing something for you like sp just out of like the pure intention of you know the experience and like you know making yourself better or whatever um you'll still get to that point of looking better but it's gonna be it's gonna have all these like little fragments in there yes you and yes and the, what just came to mind is like if, if there's something that you cannot stop doing for more than a few days that's an addiction it's like if you can't stop going to the gym for a week you're addicted and that's that's not pointing to something that's healthy for you you're you're still buying into that that like you said the puppet strings you know they're controlling yeah. you yeah, yeah to make you yeah mm -hmm. or even the reverse is true if something if you're if you don't feel like going to the gym um mm -hmm. and you force yourself to go um there might like this is a uh, this is where it's complicated too where mm. it's the where um that that forcing yourself to go is it going against your true nature or are you aligning yourself to like you know make yourself better so right I don't know. it gets it gets it gets weird it gets weird but like bottom line is as long as people do the shadow work around it um like yeah why, why they're doing these things like they can tell they can tell if it's like puppet strings um if they're allowing yeah if they're allowing themselves to be puppeted through unintegrated fears, traumas, or whatever, whatever aspect, uh, like aspects, you know, that, that may be being pulled through us or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I totally get what you're saying because it's different. I feel like it's different when you go to the gym because it feels good for you and you're just enjoying it. It's, it brings you joy. That's different than when you go because, oh, I have to do it to look good or to impress people. That's a different frequency, you know? Yeah, and same. And that's, I think I, I spoke about this earlier too, whereas where um, I've just, when I, my, my, for some reason, I just feel better when I'm running, um, when I'm doing like cardio stuff. So um, that's kind of been my, my chosen chosen mode of transport but like um i do i do like you know do body weight exercises and stuff but um but yeah it's it's just um i don't think i've like integrated the the parts that i need to integrate to um to maybe dive into that dive into that more deeply but um but yeah because i and maybe it's because i've been exposed to um like I grew up around people who are obsessed like gym obsessed ah really yeah me too I know me too and yeah. so I've gotten away from that like I completely separated myself from the running culture I don't do racing anymore I don't go to, to the gym yeah, anymore yeah. I just do what I feel is good in the moment and if I if I want to go for a run I will and I can go for hours kind of like you said it's like I can go running for four hours that's fine but as long as it brings me joy if i'm not enjoying it then i'm like okay i'm done you know like whatever it's not about yeah. that it's not about like oh I, i'm doing it to be fit and to 
beat people in a race. I'm doing it just because it feels right for me and because it's building my stamina because I know that in this reality, some of us, that's what we're here for. And I'm just like, ah, yeah, we're here to be resistant and to endure, you know, certain things. And it's like that kind of like warrior energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You brought, you brought up a, you brought up a good point. Like that. I just noticed some shadow work I might need to do because uh, I've been, I've probably been avoiding going to the gym because of all the, the, the bad experiences um, that I had around knowing people who were trying to like force me in there. Ah, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> so they're like, like, so they, it, it would like, I'm like from, from a, their perspective, they were probably like, you know, doing it out of like, like, uh, come, you know, join us and like, and let's like be included, like, you know, let's be part, part of this group or whatever. Mm. <laughs> I, I, always, I always felt like um, it wasn't organic to me. So, mm. um, so I think the, I think the many years of me being around people who loved going to the gym, maybe um, in, in an unhealthy way, like you said, maybe they were addicted, like maybe they were like, you know, like, always like about this physique like let's get, let's go like you know th that kind of yeah that kind of. so so um I did I did grow up around those people like I had some some of those people in my family um um and then uh in college um in college as well um uh wow. ran, in, ran into a lot of people who kind of who kind of used you know exercise and like the gym and stuff to cover their shadow work but they, wow, weren't, yeah. they weren't actually doing like, that's what I was saying when we, we even jumped into this conversation. If you're going into the gym and like, while you're lifting your weights, if, if you're in your head, if, um, if you're processing, you know, stuff that's gone through your day, um, kind of like what I was saying, like anytime, you know, you've like, like you can work, we can work multidimensionally. You don't, you don't have to go into the gym, put headphones on and just zone out, uh, <laughs> yeah. zone out for like th two, three hours and then just go home. Like while you're doing all that stuff, you can navigate your consciousness. Yeah. And, um, and that, that part appeals to me. And, uh, when I'm ready to go back to the gym, I'll probably like to into like, I'm into heavy lifting or whatever, whatever, all this stuff. <laughs> what I'll probably be doing is when I'm, when I'm lifting the weights or, you know, when I'm doing these exercises, um, I'm going to be, uh, instead of distracting myself with music or whatever, I'm going to be like s finding shadow fragments in my consciousness, like with every rep, like I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, wow. I, so I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of the things we do, a lot of the hobbies that exist, um, we, we kind of underestimate them while what you can do shadow work while watching movies, you can do shadow work while playing video games, you can play shadow work, like said, by going to the gym, uh, running. Um, I mean, if you're a crocheter, when you're crocheting, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. like, yeah. I think people limit limit like the just be, uh, just because a hobby is a hobby, it's not meant to distract you and like make you feel better, um, and you know keep the shadows at bay. What 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 we should be doing is uh, using these these tools or these chan like times in our lives to integrate and not not avoid you know, certain things. So if you're mm. using any, if any hobby you have is kind of being used to avoid something, then that's, that's when you should be doing shadow work. Exactly. <laughs> that, was a, that was a really yeah. long, that was a really long answer for shadow work, but. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, well, yeah, we talked about shadow work and I asked you the question and we went on this rant of like gym and not, but that is perfect. Let's just bring it back to like the, so the question was like, so what is shadow work, right? And how does it look like for you? What can it look like for other people? It, it can look different from uh, your perspective, 
but what's important is not to distract yourself from what you should be looking at. It's to take those moments and really connect with yourself and, and see, okay, what is it that I can integrate in the now with the activity that I'm doing, right? It's like, so you can do it in so many ways. It doesn't have to look the same for everybody because it can be meditation. It could be dream state. It could be the gym, like you said, or like crochet or whatever. It's just like, there's so many different ways to do it. But as long as you're not using that activity as a distraction, then yeah. that can definitely turn into shadow work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, like I'm telling you, when I'm watching a movie, uh, like for those who are aware, like you know, we have uh, we have multiple you know chakras and like where where we have uh, you know this multi dimensional awareness and all this stuff, and like I'm I'm tapped into all fifteen of my dimensions when I'm when I'm watching a, when I'm watching a movie, like trying to trying to get as much of it out like i'm not just watching a movie and just like zoning out and like oh i had a terrible day let me just turn this on um and just like zonk out <laughs> like <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> so i mean that that might trigger some people but i mean i don't i don't if anyone's watching this podcast and they watch tv to just do this then maybe <laughs> so, do some shadow work <laughs> At the same time, I know, right? <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, but yeah, I, I've really, I've really started being about um, being more conscious in everything I do, whether it's laundry or like literally anything I'm doing. Like I try to uh, turn it into a into a thing um, <laughs> of figuring myself out. Wow, that like, is yeah, that's really cool. And that's what that's basically what shadow work is like. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I like your definition of shadow work and everybody will have a different definition. And what I'm here to, to do is share all these perspectives, because, you know, I, I feel like some people are, are just kind of really fixed on their ideas and everything. And just it's like this is the way it is or not. And. I like to explore different perspectives and we can see things from different angles. And if it, even if we don't agree sometimes, that's okay. It's about considering and saying, oh, that's interesting. And then thinking, well, you know, maybe I agree, maybe I don't, maybe I will later. But yeah, what's important yeah. is to be open to all of these different perspectives. And so that's one of the, I guess the objectives of this podcast is to help people like, uh, you know, explore all that and not be close to what they think reality is because also timelines are shifting all the time. You know, it's like one day things, something might be true and another day it's a different thing. So it's like, we've got to like adapt a lot. And I feel like, so this is what's coming to mind. A lot of people on this planet, like you and me are very, adaptable like we have this capability of adapting to different situations and and uh and being like a chameleon and we can be everywhere at the same time you know it's like it's like yeah it, it, the ethiopian energy for me is also that it's like uh adaptability you know what i mean so that's really cool <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the way i like the way you put it and um you know we have we all have different capacities um, starting out, like starting out, you know, like, you know, somebody might have a, a, a bigger capacity for something, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, uh, anyone else isn't capable of, uh, reaching or like transcending that, that capacity. Like if you see something in somebody, um, you know, and you're like, oh, I wish I was more like them or whatever, um, take that, yeah you know, do the shadow work and like inspire yourself and, you know, uh, cha change, change uh, what you need to change instead of uh, um, kind of like distracting yourself or avoiding, avoiding that yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And, but that's the thing is like if people comparing themselves to others based on what they're doing, it's like, well, maybe they have that capability and that's cool because later we can put that together and do something and build something together 
Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and we don't have to all be tuning into the, the same capabilities or frequencies or whatnot, but it's like eventually, since we're coming together in one way or another, because we're just naturally connecting, we can build something later on or uh, help people also kind of rise up to, to their highest potential. And it doesn't have to look the same for everyone, but I, I do feel like there's a lot of that, like comparing people and saying, oh, you're, you're probably higher or lower. And I'm just like, everybody has different stuff that they're working on. And in the, I guess you could say in the higher realms or just, you know, elsewhere, uh, we are all working together anyways. And we came here to learn different things and we're at different steps or levels are at our in our own journey. But yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's useless to compare people, I think, you know, to like, where, are you in a higher or lower level of consciousness? Like, you know, where are you at? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big one um, where uh, like, it's, it's kind of like this thing of like, you're letting the, like, you know, the light, the light, like, uh, like, let's say like you, you and me, you know, where we might be good at something. Um, and then we meet somebody and they're so, you know, kind of glamored by, but by what we're so good at. And they try to, you know, maybe simulate that or like imitate or whatever. Um, but the whole time, um, that's kind of, I feel like that's where your shadow kind of trips you up because um, when, like, our, when we do shadow work and all these things, um, it actually increases our capacity. So the the harder something is to for you to face. Um, that's when you should actually face it because like um that could be the the key to your superpower like if mm -hmm. if you, you've gone through something in your life um if you've gone through something in your life and you keep av avoiding it you know through uh finding people or doing things or um you know uh surrounding yourself with people who kind of distract you from that energy um mm -hmm. when, when like your shadow has been calling you there this this whole time um you're kind of kind uh, kind of stunting your stunting your growth too because um the like i said the harder something is for you to face the deeper the shadow work is when you're able to do it like you'll be able to like that's going to be your superpower too. like a way for you to help a way for you to help other people. Like just because, just because, you know, somebody like, um, did a tarot card reading a tarot or whatever, tarot, <laughs> <laughs> just because, yeah. somebody, just because somebody did like a reading for you and it helped you, um, mm -hmm. like, because they were good at that, um, doesn't mean like the answer is for you to get good at reading and then like read yourself cards all the time like mm -hmm. it's to take that little nugget that they gave you and kind of shine light for yourself and be like okay where like what did this aw awaken in me and like how much deeper can I take it because the deeper we go in within ourselves um you know the more the more capacity we create um, you know, for to unlock, you know, our light and like our powers and stuff like that. I, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I have a question for you that just came up just randomly is that when you grew, when you were growing up, did you have some sort of like, um, in terms of, you know, cause mainstream psychology, because I was doing psychology, I just quit recently psychology i was doing a phd in psychology and stuff and i i see all the programming behind it and i was just wondering uh have you had any like experiences where they were trying to put you in a box or saying oh you you have this or you know like i don't know like just tell me what your experience with psychology is because i feel like we uh, us as like you know i guess yeah. whatever you want to call it like you know, some people call it, call it star seeds, indigos, whatever. I don't like labeling too much, although it, it serves its purpose. But I'm just curious to know if you've had any like 
bad experiences with psychology? Uh, fortunately, no. Mm. Um, uh, I've had I've had some bad experiences trying to self-diagnose myself when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. So what, tell me, tell me about that, because I feel uh, like there's something there. Did you look at what you might be or might not be? And then you got like, oh, my gosh, I might be this. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. Ooh. So when I was like when I was like 20, 21, 22, um, I went through this phase of like uh, kind of uh, comparing myself to the external world and like mm -hmm. um like seeing seeing things or whatever and then it made me question myself like wait do I have this or do I have mm -hmm. that I went through like these not very constructive rabbit holes of me trying to figure out figure out what what was going on in my head but it was lit it was through the filter of like psychology which now I know is uh very it has like this very limited uh, like you said, it like boxes things up and like tries to classify them. But like, um, but now we know, like from the me now knows anything that I was going through back then. Um, it was just, you know, consciousness trying to figure itself out. Yeah. Like that's, that's all it was. Like we, us creating the boxes uh, as we grow up, or like, or, you know, systems creating those boxes, it fragments us and it doesn't mm -hmm. give us, it doesn't give us like this holistic uh, view of ourselves. So like, you know, you're growing up, you know, somebody, somebody slaps a narcissist label on you. Somebody slaps a, a psychotic label on you. Somebody slaps a ADHD label on you. Somebody slaps like uh, whatever. And then like, you know, we grow, we grow up or like even, I mean, okay, let's, throw this in there somebody like you know then you grow up and you're still trying to figure yourself out uh astrology gets slapped on there so you're like oh may maybe all this stuff is like because i'm a virgo or this. <laughs> so yeah. you can, you can yeah. see how it starts uh, like you can see where uh this pure kid or whatever growing up starts getting fragmented like when yeah. they should when they should just be able to grow up and just figure themselves out like the system already like when you're coming into the world it's already trying to like put you in a box like oh like this 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 kid will be good here this kid will be good here oh um this kid is not functional it he'll like they'll never be useful to the system like toss them out like mm -hmm. like so yeah so what label did you slap yourself on like uh, when you were 22 <laughs> oh i was like uh clearly uh like adhd like i that, i know i like that's something you can self-diagnose and like you don't even need to self-diagnose because you're like oh yeah like i mean and adhd is the most like the dumbest thing i've ever he heard even be a diagnosis or even like people medicate it um because yeah. it's yeah. literally it's it's part it's a part of like your it's a, a part of like the human experience, like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, a, yeah. a, a human is not supposed to be concentrating on something for eight hours a day. Like there is no such thing as an attention deficit, a deficit compared to what? Like, like it's the, these, uh, it's just, that was just like, that was an, the, a box that I was just like, yeah. I, okay. I have ADHD, whatever, but um, mm -hmm. just, it just blew my mind that um, a kid is diagnosed with ADHD and they're given like a freaking psychotic medication. Yeah. Yes. And, and thank you for sharing that because I do feel like that has a, like a big emotional charge and for you and for people listening, because that is definitely the thing that is more like the most overdiagnosed thing in our children today. And to the date, it's still saying, oh, your child can't pay attention for more than this span of time. He has ADHD. And so I really think that, that that's a, obviously a big part of the program. So yeah, yeah. 
I, I found that like that's, that's just something that came in like right now it's like I have to say something about this and I'm glad that like you could say it from your experience that that's what you thought you know and that you put yourself in this box thinking oh my gosh I have an, a disorder what is a disorder like what you know that it just they just make us think that there's something wrong with us all the time whereas these are the most gifted people on the planet you know yeah and it's just a natural part of being human like just yeah. because just because you know they label it adhd and say oh this person's not good in class or this person needs to take medicine if they're gonna be a corporate drone and like they won't they won't be able to pr produce enough uh you know uh what like output or output enough uh you know product or whatever or like you know they it won't they won't be a benefit to us if we don't medicate them or like yeah it's it's honest it's honestly it's honestly in, insane um and you can see how it's it's basically like the external world trying to and like the uh yeah the adhd thing is big too because a lot of you know uh, awakened people, star seeds, blah blah blah. Like uh, ADHD <laughs> is a big a big one for everyone. Um, like that's the one thing that every everyone gets diagnosed with growing up. But um, but yeah, another thing that I thought I had was like schizophrenia too. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, because of the visions that we get and stuff yeah. that's like boom, you just like you just like in another reality, and it's just like and it, it, even it's it's just like an AR. You know, it's like augmented reality thing and then but we know now we know and i know that you know <laughs> that that's that's not what it is we're not buying into the game and this is we're so actually important. seeing yeah. the game we're we're seeing the we're seeing through the the veil and um mm -hmm. the external world tries to put you in a box and says oh you're not seeing through the veil um so you're sick you're sick you're sick you're sick yeah yeah uh, so, and that's the, really the saddest part of it, honestly. Um, the the he like ADHD is not that bad, but there are some really bad mental illnesses that if you catch them early, they don't even have to become a mental illness, and that that person can be aligned aligned out of it, um, just like how I aligned myself out of schizophrenia. Because, exactly. Um, yeah, sorry. But but that was because like honestly, I will say, um, my mom my mom was not the most amazing mom um uh but of course i love her and everything but one thing i do thank her for i mean i thank her for a lot of things but the one thing is she uh like her back she was a little backwards thinking and anytime i would go up to her and like be like i think i have this i think i have this i think i have this she would be like no you're <laughs> Ethiopians, Ethiopians don't get schizophrenia. That's a Western. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in her in her own crazy way, she she helped me um, like because if she list, like if I, if she was from any other culture or, you know, maybe um, was maybe Americanized too much um, and she took me to uh, a, a psychiatrist i probably would have been diagnosed with schizophrenia and like i wouldn't be here today exactly and that's the thing is like people go to the psychiatrist or, or think they buy into the narrative and that's when it becomes i guess uh in a certain way i guess like, the word that comes to mind is like toxic for their for their reality it's because they're like it, it becomes like this this downward spiral of like oh i'm seeing things and they're like this is not normal i must be crazy and then they get diagnosed and they're like oh it's even worse so instead of accepting that as a gift yeah, they yeah. see it as as like a, a, a um yeah what's it called the, the word it's escaping me in english um <laughs> maladie how do you Earth? say this yeah no like like a disorder disorder so disorder. they see it as that and then that in a way also just kind of just separates them from you know anything else and they just get lost it, yeah. you know but but we who know that that when we see things like this it's no this is what is actually normal that what's normal what's not normal is not seeing things you know <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, what's not normal but, is just ignoring the the re really our multidimensionality and what we have access to. That is not normal. Yeah, okay. what's not normal is uh, believing everything you see on TV and like yeah. that that being your only 
that or like you know what you hear on the radio or you know news mainstream like the mainstream is not reality but like a lot of these things um are working yeah. to make the mainstream the the operating reality yeah that's that's what it is it's the at the end of the day it's the the external systems that were built um you know to to manage to manage consciousness to manage humanity um they don't want humanity knowing that we can create our reality too they just want you plugged into the mainstream so all you're doing is uh creating what they want you to create like the, the that like earlier what i was saying like you know when you're in school and you're not productive uh when you're at work and you're not productive it's like you you get tossed out you're not going to help them manufacture your their their reality um so uh yeah. but yeah no that's uh that's kind of my experience with like psychology and um and like mental mental illness um and like um if yeah, so, <laughs> yeah um when i when i encounter people who are diagnosed schizophrenics now um um who take their medicines uh who are really fragmented like i can really see like when i'm talking to them and they're switching through their personalities mm -hmm. um i can actually see like at what like at what point in their lives like that it fragmented and created like it, uh it created like this whole so they're it's basically like people walking around with like uh like reality attachments or something like that but it's uh um yeah mm, unfortunately yeah. unfortunately i haven't figured out how to be a superhero in that sense where i can just like punch somebody and knock the schizophrenia out of them or something like that <laughs> So in a way, uh, I think there's it's like a also like what they choose to do, you know, because yeah. some people will just choose to say, oh, I'm sick. Oh, what was me? And then they just fall into this hole. Whereas other people are like, oh, my gosh, this is actually real. I, I know that I'm tapping into what is actually happening behind the veil yeah. and and do something with it because we can do something with this information, you yeah. know, and. And I feel like there, there are these, so what comes to mind right now is like, there are these windows opening up to us and showing us, you know, things, okay, that are useful for other people and for us in our journeys. And that is how we are coming together as well. This is the next question. So what can we expect to happen next? Right. Because I've been asking myself this question and other people, it's like, okay, I feel like there is a little bit of like maybe subgroups dispersion or something going on right now but a, a lot of people are also looking within themselves connecting with the people that they resonate the most but then later what's going to happen is it going to be like people coming more together and building communities are we going to just go on to an island and and not and ignore the rest of the population yeah about how, what what i think what i feel i'm here to do so i guess the concrete question is what are you here to do, Austin? Oh, uh, well, um, I, I touched on that a little earlier, um, but yeah, I feel like I'm kind of supposed to be a bridge builder, um, a, a, you know, a, a reality collapser or like false reality co collapser, because anytime, um, anytime I meet somebody and um, like I used to be, you know, this more introverted, I still am introverted, but um, yeah. Like I, I used to be this person when somebody said something that didn't uh, resonate with me, I would just like let it go. But now l lately I've um, I've kind of, you know, started stepping up. And if something doesn't sit right with me, like I trust my gut um, and uh, and just speak up. And, you know, if th whatever happens, happens. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, lately, the biggest thing I've been doing is. Um, um kind of trying to build bridges like um mo not more so like on social media but um um but like in real life like people i'm meeting like in through work um uh you know just uh as i'm going about my day 
uh, if I if I meet up or like, you know, talk with people, you know, who who trigger me or whatever, or I get or I trigger them. Like I try to I try to pull these conversations out of them <laughs> where, where it's like, OK, so what's going on? What's going on here? Like, you know, do you see what's going on? Yeah. See what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and see if I can help them see if I can help them break the break the veil um and uh my professional my professional work I think I told you about this um uh I start like almost uh almost two years ago now um I kind of landed in this like corporate position wow uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. for the, yeah for the for the longest time I was I was fighting it like I was one of those awakened people who was like, um, who was like, corporations are bad. Um, you know, I don't want to be part of the corporation. Uh, like I'm working against humanity if I'm, you know, uh, selling out or whatever. Um, so that was big, uh, big shadow work for me. Um, uh, but as soon as I did that, um, an opportunity aligned for me to kind of sneak into a corporation like on a uh in in a very like critical role um where where i have where i have access to like many people's consciousness so wow. yeah. um so That's like good. i do um i do like corporate trainings um like uh i train any any one from like minimum wage all the way up to uh like management mm, uh, mm -hmm. and like i i kind of um uh, inst uh kind of teach them like uh the prop what i'm supposed to be teaching them is the proper way to do stuff like you know yeah. the the, yeah. The, the way that the system wants <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting we're not gonna do it that way right <laughs> yeah no we're not, we're not doing it that way so what i've actually done is um i've started creating um my guides or like my my manuals or my training manuals based on this material called um the 12 attitudes and responsibilities um it's from uh, um materials called like the freedom teachings mm -hmm. um this is one of the most uh like this is one of probably the most like the deepest things that i've ever encountered and um it's like nothing has ever nothing in my life like even when i was doing like you know when i was newly awakened into the new age um um and even after like you know i dabbled in wicca and all these like all these things like when i was figuring myself when i was figuring myself out none of that none of that stuff stuck but this stuff stuck and as soon as i started engaging with it like doors 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 and windows started opening so i'm like there must be something there must be something to this stuff so what mm -hmm. i've actually what so what i'm actually doing like so i like you know after you know uh, doing my shadow work align aligning you know with um you know with my truest uh like i was like you know my what's my purpose or whatever so i i was just like so right now my purpose is gonna be to kind of be like a virus in the in the system so <laughs> nice so so basically what i'm doing is um i'm training people um to operate um you know not in the way the system wants them to um but in the way that they uh they can work the system like for them for themselves kind of like like i yeah. want them I want them to be aware of the system, of course, like, but, but also like, oh, be aware that they are, they have, you know, uh, accountability and responsibility too. And anytime they're engaging with the system to kind of not just uh, blindly, like, be like, you know, calculate stuff like a robot and do what you're supposed to do, but kind of add their own, like co-creative power into, into it. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I love that. And, and, and what came to mind is like, this is the message that I want to bring through is that 
a lot of us are here to be like chameleons you know it's like we fit in everywhere yet nowhere at the same time and we, we can like we adapt to the population but at the same time there's a frequency behind everything we do even yeah. if we seem like sometimes sometimes people don't take us seriously or you know but there is something behind the you know the intention behind what we're doing is so much bigger than what it seems like and so that i think is like super powerful and wow that is so cool yeah so thank you for sharing that because i i do feel like a lot of people listening to this are going to resonate with that and this this keeps coming back it's i have to i have to do something about this like the message is like we're not leaving anybody behind yeah people who choose to come to us and who want to wake up or or you know that's what we're here to do it's not about just going and living on an island and and say oh i'm the chosen one and you screw yourself you know like no we're here to spark people you know yeah, yeah. that's so cool and whenever i'm doing like you know in the trainings um yeah. um i'm always giving that you know that person a choice like you know some people are going to resonate with this kind of stuff and some people aren't like it goes it goes back to our capacity our DNA, um, you know, our consciousness, you know, what what somebody is able to wrap their head around or not. And um, in the in the uh, in the time I've been doing this, um, I really, really started focusing on doing this maybe in the past like seven months. Um, up on, up until then, I've just kind of been you know building it up like kind of seeing how I can sneak it, sneak these things into the system. <laughs> so yeah. Now, now I'm like at the point where I I'm able to, um, to apply it. Um, and what I've been, what I've started noticing is that, that just some people just won't get it. And, yeah. um, and that's, and that's totally okay. And, you know, I train them like the system wants me to train them and I let them go. But when there's people who kind of get sparked and like, like mm -hmm. they feel like you know they feel that co-creative power um then you know i will um connect connect deeper with that person yeah, right I connect i connect yeah. deeper with them and even without speaking i think like you said uh in the higher dimensions we we're engaging with like every, even a random person you talk to on the street like in the higher dimensions you guys could know each other like uh, uh like you know very Since forever yeah so so um you know i i hold that intention kind of like when i'm encountering people where that resonate with this and like see that they're able like they're part in the system and like they're co they're co-creators and not just um robots or whatever or that they don't have to like yeah the system um the system is important systems are important but um um you also have the power you're empowered to like think for yourself like you don't always have to do what the what the system tells you to do but anyway yeah but yeah so like it uh and like i don't force this off on anyone but okay so another aspect of my job is that i also terminate people right so like i ter i terminate contracts mm. uh, uh and you know, maybe maybe I do that in the higher dimensions too now, like that. Yeah, I know, right? So in maybe. some ways, I think we're here doing things that we also do in the higher realms when we're yeah. starting to integrate more of who we are. We yeah, start applying yeah. those capabilities here as well. Yeah, for sure. So go ahead. <laughs> so um, so another thing, another aspect of my job is uh the like low performers or like what the system deems uh just like uh you know just get them out like so they come to me they come to me as well um they come to me as well and um if i'm able to coach them if i'm able to coach them to success that's a that's a win for me um, yeah. um even if they're not able to keep their job in the company um if i'm able to coach them into success like to realize you know their power like mm -hmm. that, I like I said, I kind of I weave in the the twelve attitudes and responsibilities and like all this uh, consciousness, like co-creation and like you know your thought 
creates your reality. Like, but I, I make it very basic. Like I don't, I don't get woo woo with it. <laughs> <when> I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not saying like, oh, you have 15 chakras and like, yeah. like, you know, uh, pineal duct ve veca codes and all like, yeah. All <laughs> yeah but, but um but like uh so i've kind of like that all that stuff all that stuff i did has distilled through me right mm. and i turn it into like uh digestible stuff that people can either swallow or not swallow um and when i'm working with these people that the system wants me to terminate like i i see if um I see if they're coachable, right? What the system wants me to do is coach them, like, you know, to be productive in the system. But what I'm actually doing is like, uh, in my head, I'm like, you're, it's, it's a good thing you're leaving this system, but I'm going to equip you, I'm going to equip you with the tools that you need. So after you leave here, um you'll actually you know have an expanded consciousness and like maybe start seeing the world differently start uh um maybe co-creating your reality a little bit you know you never know wow uh, yeah that's super powerful but, yeah yeah so um that's that's honestly been uh what like i like i said i haven't i'm not you know i haven't changed the world yet but um <laughs> But we're in the process of doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's a yeah, it's a it's a work in progress, and it's not about like the big results. It's about like that we're accumulating. You know, a certain we we're impacting people, even if it's one person per you know per month or you know whatever. It doesn't matter. It's that's what's important. It's like you're impacting people, and yeah. I I love you know when we were talking one day. It's like. The universe only gives you what you can handle and and it's like you're doing it and it's like you are yeah you are already doing it you don't have to look for the next big thing or what am i gonna do next or is this really my job or like you know it's like you're already there it's, it's enjoying the journey of it right so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and i'm only being i'm only able to do this because i did my shadow work I can <laughs> Otherwise, I love that because I did my shadow work. <laughs> uh, because other, otherwise, otherwise, I'd be part of, part of the system too. Like anyone else in my position would just be doing what they're told. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, so like I'm like I'm telling you this this opportunity came up uh, out of nowhere. Um, like I knew somebody in the company and they were leaving and they were like, you know what, you know, like you, you have such a good head on your shoulders. I never know what you're talking about, but <laughs> like, uh, uh, like I, think, I, think, I think you might be good. I think you might be good for this position. And they, they talked me up to, you know, the corporate people. Um, wow. Wow. That's and, great. And I made myself sound good, you know, like a robot, like, <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! Good job. You know you're like a spy. You know yeah. it's like an infiltrated, like you know, like I know your role and here. I infiltrated yes. the the yeah. infiltrator. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I love it. I love it. Uh, but yeah, like not not to not to talk too much about myself, but um, but yeah, that that's kind of what I've been doing. Some people might agree with it. Some people call me might call me a sellout, or whatever. But I know I know what what i'm doing and um yeah what are you doing that's don't worry about what i'm doing what are you doing? <laughs> that's exactly what hey why are you criticizing me what have you done that's important you know like what the <laughs> i know I'm, right i'm i'm working i'm working in who knows like 50 dimensions right now like yeah we're everywhere we yeah. are literally everywhere and some people like don't I, I just yeah some people just don't take it seriously and that, that just kind of sometimes it pisses me off but but then you know I'm like you know what whatever what people think about what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing just like what you said I yeah. know what I'm here to do and as long as you're just really like anchored in your truth yeah. that is that that is just powerful in itself because it, it brings this like this frequency of like yes uh, you're going to attract the people that are, are also aligning with that 
just like with you and me when we connected with the whole llama thing, which I really want to talk about right now. It's with the llama. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly the most random thing ever, too. I know. <laughs> but it's it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know what part like that that must have been, you know, uh a part of us that was, you know, somewhere in another timeline, somewhere higher or like lower. I don't know. Anywhere. Just <laughs> It was definitely like it was a glitch like you know glitches happen right we mm -hmm. called it we called it a glitch and um you know some things happen randomly maybe that happened randomly but also maybe not randomly because the series of events that followed after that is the <laughs> <laughs> i know right so let me just sit, tell the story to people listening if anybody's not familiar with this is because during one of the the chats that we were having in one one of the groups that we were part of together is that yeah you were like you always put these little eyes when you're like oh i see or what does that mean like i i'm seeing this or what does that mean when you put those little eyes everywhere you know like i i even put them i even put them when when i was like 12 p.m right i know <laughs> it's like uh it's like, like, oh. uh it's like it's like i'm looking it's like i'm looking to you kind i don't know uh like it's kind of like i'm looking i'm like <laughs> i'm here yeah that's what it feels like but you use that all the time yeah. and then one time you <laughs> yeah good no i was gonna say i use it i use it for mult like it means it means many like you like as you said it means many things to me when i put those eyes on posts when i put it on like my story and with a post it's like you better look at this thing <laughs> or like uh yeah or like when i'm or like if if i if i react to something uh that like that makes me go like this like i'll put i'll put it i'll put it on there um but yeah that's basically it i use i use that those eye emojis for multiple re like multiple reasons but um but yeah so yeah when we were doing when we were dm like we there was a conversation going on in the chat and we were having our own whisper conversation during the chat um and then uh i think we were just confirming to each other like stuff was being said in the background and we were just like saying like oh yeah this this is a nugget or this is a nugget or something. And then something big was said and I put like a huge line of eyes and then there was like one, one llama, one, one llama in the eyes. And then, uh, I don't know, I can't remember the rest if you could. Yeah, I was like, okay, so what happened next was like, I, I was like, I saw the eyes and then the llama and I was like, I wrote to you, why did you put that llama there? Yeah. And, you, and then you were like, oh, that was a glitch. It was yeah. like laughing and like giggling about it. And then I, I started putting llamas in there for the, yeah. the next couple conversations yeah. to everyone. And nobody understood why the llamas were showing up. And then we had to like explain to people, oh, so it's because I sent him in a direct message, blah, blah, blah. Because after a while, it turned into a direct message. Because you yeah, know when yeah. people, when you write when you write to people, it, I don't know. It, yeah. Zoom is really yeah. funny. It's like sometimes it turns yeah, you into yeah. A, it. Yeah, it it brings you into a direct message, even though you think you're talking to everyone. So we started talking privately, just like randomly, and then all of a sudden we had to like explain to people why we were laughing so much about the llamas. Oh right, and we weren't muted. We were. Uh, we weren't. <laughs> our voices, like so. We yeah. We were. We were talking in the dms and it wasn't muted so they were like what are these two laughing about like what the fuck is yeah and then yeah we had to loop everyone in um, yeah that was yeah that was that was hilarious um and then yeah the the whole series of events after that like llamas started appearing for for everyone uh yeah like, look like 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 this my daughter made this yeah that's crazy <laughs> This is not, this is so funny. It's like a llama with like a really weird smiley face. <laughs> and glasses looks like. It lo yeah, I don't, yeah, it does, right? It looks like you. Oh my gosh. That's, 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 like <laughs> that's funny. <No>. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, the just the series of events that followed after that was so hilarious. Everyone started 
uh, seeing llamas in their reality. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of died down after, after I think, I think uh, that whole thing was really a, a message for me uh, because remember I got, um, I got this. Oh yeah, show people, show people the tattoo, please. Oh my gosh, yes. <gasps> yeah, you got a llama tattoo. I remember that. <laughs> that. Please don't show us your underwear, but okay. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm still at home. <laughs> uh yeah but it's at least it's shorts underwear it's not like yeah i know no, i'm just i'm just i'm just messing yeah. with you but that's <laughs> love that's lovely that you got the tattoo i was just like so touched that like oh my gosh that is so amazing yeah yeah the, uh, like that was the that was like i don't um i don't get tattoos often like i have some um but that one was just like screaming to me like you have to make this one a tattoo so, oh, so, so uh, but yeah that I kind of that like uh I was like I uh, I just wanted to embody it I was like you know like glitches glitches are you know th the things that shake up the system mm -hmm. uh, and like you know there's all these memes about being the like you know be the glitch you want to see or like you know all these like the 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 stuff like that and uh this kind of was like a confirmation to me that like uh glitches can really like shake shake reality up and like create like whole whole time like a whole thing like like I mean it it popped up into like how, however many people in the group kept remember everyone was replying in there and saying like oh my god llama look like what I yeah I know we opened up a portal I love opening up portals yeah so I was, <laughs> I was like I was like that I want to remember that and like that power that you know we all we all have and like yeah that was kind of my intention around um around getting the tattoo and it's my favorite like I have a couple tat like okay I have more than a couple tattoos but that one's my that one's my favorite that was that one's my favorite one um, and no hate no no hate on my other tattoos because I got I got a couple before I was I, I was awakened and like I have this one what is that one? I like it actually. What is that? Uh, spiral. Yeah. It's like it's, a spiral. It's, yeah. Um, when I first got it, it was like a an African symbol. Like there's there's a there's symbols in Af some African cultures, and that one just meant unity. Oh, okay. I like it. Uh, yeah, it's like it's one line that makes two energies. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I like uh, that. Yeah. Um, ah. And what other one? Let, let's see the other hand. <laughs> the other hand <laughs> uh this one is just the uh, that was after finding like eternal life or whatever so. it's a, what's important is those moments right of like when you when you feel like there's has been a, a change in your life and yeah. that's when you get these tattoos and that's what's important it doesn't matter for me yeah there may be some symbols that are distorted whatnot but that was a very important part of my life and it's represented as you know this this like uh I guess you know when you have like these paths like in your life you have like a path and then you have like a roundabout it's like a very important area I guess or area or, like I guess uh yeah a point in your life where you can choose to go this way or that way but it's that you know and it represents it like a node or I don't know how to like call it but yeah, yeah. I see what you mean and and yeah for me I don't really see tattoos as a as a bad thing you know, as long as, as it's, it was aligned in the moment, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I was just remembering is that I did a meditation about, let's say, two or three days ago, and I got this really clear image of a llama in there. Like, uh, it's like, you know, the, those kinds of meditations where you're just like, okay, uh, I, I kind of don't know what I'm doing now, but just I need some guidance kind of thing. And, and mm -hmm. so I got so I got I got other things too. I got like bees as well, like a bee and stuff like that. But then I also got a llama in there. I was like, oh, there's Austin and you know, the guys <laughs> that we have connected with llamas and stuff. So I found that really cool. And I'm like thinking, well, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure like even, even though we're not necessarily working together at the moment, I 
think I think we're gonna come together at some point, you know. But right now, it's like maybe some people feel like they need to work on things on on the on, the, on themselves, like or yeah, separately. But it, it feels like it's gonna come together later on. I don't know. What is your take yeah. on on this? Like, I don't... <laughs> oh yeah, like I mean, there's an ebb and flow to to creation and life, and I think we were uh, we were flow, and now we're ebbing, and then. Uh, you know, figuring stuff out. And then, yeah, like naturally we're going to start flowing, uh, flowing together too. Um, so yeah, I think just when, uh, when, when everyone feels the time is right, um, or when each single person feels the time is right, like, we'll, uh, I think it's like, we just, we should just be honest and tell each other <laughs> because like, yeah. like we're, we're past the point of feeling like, uh, oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, reach out because of, you know, stuff that happened before, mm -hmm. like that, like we're, we're way beyond that. Like if, uh, if we, um, if we parted ways, like in a, in a bad way, that doesn't mean, you know, we're not going to talk forever or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. it just means, it just means like we both may, may need to integrate some stuff. And as long as, you know, both, uh, or like whatever, uh, all parties are open to, um, uh, to reconnecting like you like the 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 insights that are shared after something like that um, are probably going to be a lot deeper than um, you know what caused the what caused like any kind of like disconnection or anything like that so that's what that's what I believe mm -hmm. I think these like reconnections will happen in uh, in like in divine time as long as we're like in our in our truth and honesty like not letting our shadows or traumas or fears kind of get get the best of us mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah. No, I, de I definitely feel like um right now everyone's kind of decided to do their own thing um and then um you know they have their lessons to learn maybe and then we'll uh we'll kind of flow back together and be like oh my god like we're all we we're all the same but like we're deep like somehow like our capacity has changed yeah yeah I, I yeah I see I see what you mean I see what you mean and sometimes it's really difficult to put these things into words but I feel like you and me kind of get each other in terms of what we're saying and a few people listening as well it's like words you know there's always so much meaning behind what is said and mm -hmm that is what's cool about I think these connections is that you don't really need to say things most of the time or when you say something it's like there's so much more behind that and I want to just thank you so much for being here today and um sharing your experiences and yeah yeah mm -hmm. it, was, it was cool I think I think I liked that our our session or like the podcast was kind of focused on on one on one thing like I like that we delved into shadow work because that's um that's like a really important thing and it's not like this woo woo mysterious like uh new age bs it's literally just about reconciling your your humanity with your spirituality and like your you know your life experiences like like that you we have to face ourselves in certain certain things like you can't always be the good guy you can't always be the bad guy you can't always uh um you know yeah i i, I exactly see what so, you mean yeah, yeah. You know, so like but and you can't always run from it either <laughs> yeah yeah and you know so, we were yeah we were saying sorry we were saying this at the beginning like uh i would say we should focus on how it's everything is so complex yet so simple you know mm -hmm. so I kind of want to bring it back to that it doesn't have to you know we don't have to go on a rant about that but I do think that that's important you know it, it, it it's totally linked to shadow work it doesn't have to be complex and 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 painful yes well in a way but like you can you can have fun with it and and like value it for what it is and it's just like like yeah it's very complex it's so simple I don't know what do you <laughs> we just yeah, no, that, that's, that's honestly that's a perfect full circle because um 
uh, avoiding shadow work and like, um, you know, distracting ourselves and like, uh, and all this, all this stuff that we put in between us and like, uh, figuring ourselves out is what complicates life. If you just faced, if you just faced every instance of, uh, of like shadow stuff that you're feeling and just dealt with it right away, like life would be very simple. Like we're like, um, I don't want to get too political, but politics, race, religion, like all these things are where they are now, fragmented and um, uh, and like all this stuff because somewhere in history or like nowhere in history did somebody just say, okay, we're gonna stop this shit right now. <laughs> and now we're at this point where there's a thousand religions, uh, a thousand genders that might trigger somebody. Um, uh, <laughs> Go ahead. No, yes, that's perfect. Yeah. We're just, we're at this point. No one, well, no one wanted to do, uh, you know, take responsibility and accountability. Um, and that, that accountability and responsibility can be taken by anybody. But it's just that we got here to, at the point because everyone's been externalizing their power, giving it up to governments, giving it up to, uh, religion or external systems or family or whatever that's what complicated everything like if everyone just dealt with their shit when it was meant to be dealt with instead of um projecting it onto religion or family or this did this to me or that did this to me or this or whatever um or this group of people did this or that or whatever um these things um, just like when I was saying earlier with how I dealt with my mental illness, yeah, um, these things can be, can be taken care of very early and you can live a very simple, uh, simple life. Um, yeah. but I mean, maybe that's just not the, that's just not the mission for anyone who comes to, to planet earth. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's about, for me, it's about the choice that you yeah. make, right? Because everybody has that capability and the potential to do it, in my opinion, as human beings, we, ha we do have some like similar like physiological traits or, you know, or not, but um, it, it all comes down to what do you want to do? What is your choice? And this is a free will planet. And it's, you know, some people might argue against that. It's like, oh, free will doesn't exist. And everything is already prescripted or whatnot I, I don't necessarily resonate with that I don't know but like yeah I, I do think we do have the choice to to do something more than what we're came here like scripted to do based on the system it's uh you can also override a lot of things so you and me I think we're here like us the word that comes to mind is system busters you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're here to do that too so i i just love that mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely yeah totally um total i'm totally feeling that and um but yeah that's basically like all the complications of life and all these nuances and all this shit just happens because the core thing is not handled for whatever reason maybe maybe it wasn't handled on purpose so it could be exploited or um but yeah like but but yeah that's where you see it can go into multiple rabbit holes and like so but yeah it at the end of the at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day whatever uh, <laughs> yeah uh, Cause because time is an illusion time yeah, is an illusion <laughs> because like my day is just beginning but yours is kind of like on the uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, but we're here kind of meeting in the middle. So it's kind of funny like that. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, but at the end or beginning of the day, whichever one you prefer, um, this is this is about um, this is about taking care of these things uh, that that your ego or whatever or whatever systems, make you feel like you should be avoiding like oh this is not healthy to think about 
blah 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 like mm -hmm. in, in terms in terms of stuff you have to process for yourself you shouldn't be distracting yourself from stuff that uh like clearly like if you're constantly thinking you're sick don't think you're sick like that's not what i'm saying i'm saying um if something in in your reality is not working out or um you know uh there's a part of you that you like you've run into a few times that's kind of derailed you or like uh it felt like it was distracting you or whatever or like there was something deeper there or maybe you got triggered or something something just doesn't sit right that sit that something doesn't sit right isn't a message to avoid whatever isn't sitting right it's a message to address it and like like i think the the inverted nature of this reality makes people feel like oh this thing feels uh not good or whatever so let's not let's not deal with it like we can throw love and light at it and it'll be like good like that you know that works that might work temporarily or whatever but like you got to yeah. you got to you got to deal with that stuff and like i think we would be uh 3 400 years ago if um if the people who were who are who weren't really trying to change the world got if they didn't get wiped out we would be uh uh we would be in a completely different uh like timeline like com like mm, yeah uh, like all this talk about like heaven on earth and blah 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 like it's it's possible um but not until everyone you know carries their carries their own weight like the world is fucked up yeah but um you're fucked up too <laughs> <laughs> so so like everybody just everybody just has to fuck uh fucking carry their <laughs> carry their own weight and um and we'd be good um and like it's just sad because we're at this point now like you know we don't only have to carry the weight of our stuff but generations of stuff and that's yeah. what makes that that's what makes it hard and um and uh people like this goes back to what you were saying again full circle some people are just built with more stamina some people can carry these generational things deal with them and come out the other end stronger and um and that's i mean that's that and like i feel like i'm one of those people some people might not agree some people might whatever but um but yeah 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 and that's about valuing valuing sorry our, our gifts and what we're here to do instead of comparing ourselves to oh this person knows a lot about geometry or math or or decoding or whatever. no it's not about that it's about admiring them okay yeah sure but we also have our own thing that we're here to bring and I know, I see you. So that is a beautiful way to, to end, end this podcast, Austin. Thank you so much for being here. I just truly really appreciate you and sending you such a big hug. <laughs> uh, big hugs. And uh, you want to yeah. say, you want to say, you want to say, or like, let's let everybody say goodbye to George. Oh, yes, please. Is he here? Also, maybe Georgie will watch this and see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Georgie. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was like, I was thinking when you said George, when you said George, I was like, because you said, because you call him Georgie. And I was like, oh, Georgie. I have to send a message to Georgie. Oh. Huh? <laughs> he's, he's not like a cuddly cat on, honestly, but um, we still, we still love each other. He's like, um, what I like to say, you can leave this on the podcast or not, but uh, what I like to say is, um i think i think i think i'm like his karmic guardian because he comes off he comes off as like a dark lord who got put in a, <laughs> in a, in a cat's body <laughs> <laughs> so cute oh my goodness uh, yeah. we, watch, we watch we watch each other's backs like in uh in my dreams and stuff he's come in and helped me out so mm. so definitely so definitely i uh uh i met him for met him for a reason too so yeah i love my george but it was great talking to you thanks for having me on oh thank 
you and, and thank you guys for joining in. If you listen to the whole thing, you're obviously part of our tribe. So thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you guys again. Um, I, I guess uh, this podcast episode is going to come in after I come back from my vacation break. So yeah, but I'll be doing one again very soon. And yeah. All right. Thank you guys. And see you for next time. Bye-bye. Say bye, Austin. Bye. <laughs>